What is the best infrared sauna to buy? I've been asking this question myself for the last couple of years. I'm Johannes, co-founder and co-CEO of Clear Light Saunas International, and we've been designing and building saunas now for over nine years. This video is going to help you to understand what a good infrared sauna is made of, what things to look for, what questions to ask during the research in order to really pick the best infrared sauna on the market. If you've liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment below, we'll get back to you and also check out our other YouTube videos, um, which are all there to really help you understand the topic around health, wellness, infrared saunas, red light therapy. When you want to buy the best infrared sauna on the market, you really have to start with the research around the company. This is truly important because you are investing into your health by buying an infrared sauna and you really want an ally in your corner that actually supports you along the health journey. So one of the most important things to look for in the best, in the best infrared sauna possible is the warranty. The warranty consists of a few different things and you really want to understand their warranty policy in order to figure out what the best infrared sauna company is. Some companies claim to have a limited lifetime warranty which first, which first sounds great but then on a deeper look you actually realize that it's only a seven years warranty, whereas other companies would say it's a true lifetime warranty, meaning it's literally for the lifetime of the sauna. It means for 20 years to come, or however old this company is, because that's essentially your proof of the warranty they're keeping up. So a sauna warranty typically consists of three different parts. The first one is obviously the cabin itself. The second one is the electrical components, which are a, it's a fair number because you get heaters, you get a sound system, you get control, panel, control panels and keypads in there. And the third one is labor. Those are the three things you really want to take a deep dive on when it comes to looking at the warranty of an infrared sauna. Typically, you might find two years warranty or five years warranty or maybe a limited lifetime warranty, which only is seven years. Or you might find a true lifetime warranty without any consequences on either of these different sections. So if you look at the warranty of a sauna company, typically you'll find uh, that there is a warranty on parts, the cabin, and the labor. And if you think about it, a warranty is really there to support you for the lifetime of you owning and ideally using the product which might be two years for you know cheaper saunas, it might be five years for probably average saunas, and it might be seven years for you know maybe a sauna that is a little bit more in the premium segment, or it could be lifetime warranty. You really have to go into these details, and it's important for you to understand because a company might say, we'll give you 10 years on the cabin, but they might only say they give you two years on the parts and the labor. So what that means is if, you, if you've used your sauna maybe, you know, two times a month over the course of two and a half years, and then you're a part of you, you know, your need actually of a heater or an electrical component, and neither the part nor the labor is actually part of the warranty. That means you have to pay on top of that. So you probably have to pay a technician or an electrician to come in and fix it. And if you think about it, that's not really the purpose of a warranty. The warranty is really there to give you the confidence in the product, and it's a reflection of what the manufacturer thinks how long this product and its components are going to last. If it's two years, well then it's probably very cheaply sourced materials that are being used. So the manufacturer doesn't actually have a lot of confidence that the sauna will last much longer. But equally, if you have a long warranty, might be lifetime or might be 15 years or whatever that is, that is also a reflection of the sauna company's confidence in the quality and the durability of the infrared sauna. So keep that in mind that you really look beyond what it just says in terms of warranty. Go deeper, try to understand what is the warranty on parts, what is the warranty on labor, and through that figure out whether the company is actually really on your side and supports you throughout the entire journey of you using the infrared sauna. Another important thing to look at when you choose the best infrared sauna is the returns policy. And the returns policy, again, it's a reflection of the confidence of the company and understanding that sometimes a product may not be what the customer expects. And this is never a great situation. You know, it's annoying for the customer or you know, for us essentially to come to the realization that it's just not what we want. 
which is why we then even more need the support of the company to help us in making sure that the product A makes it back safely to the warehouse or to the customer to the company and B that I obviously get my money back if I'm not happy with that. So make sure that you take a deep dive into the return policy, you understand it and through that you have confidence in the company when it comes to looking at buying the best infrared solar possible. Infrared itself obviously has different wavelengths and we already explored the concept that the different infrared spectrums have a different energy density almost. Like we know that near infrared has a shorter wavelength um, but generally it's kind of more jam-packed with energy with far infrared is a more gentle wavelength and that's why it also doesn't penetrate like super deep in the body. The the interesting bit about infrared is really that you can generate these types of infrared spectrums and literally any individual wavelength using sort of artificial materials or at least you artificially create them. When you looked at um, infrared applications being an infrared sauna or also being a red light therapy device or even if you just compare different infrared sauna manufacturers you'll see that there's a lot of talk about the technology that is being used. You have to understand that the wavelength is the wavelength, but you can actually create wavelengths differently. So there's this whole discussion around what heater type, for instance, is best when you looked at an infrared sauna. And you have carbon heaters, which nowadays most of the most of the industry actually has shifted back to. And you have ceramic heaters. And you know, 10 years ago or even 12 years ago, ceramic heaters were the go-to. Like everyone thought ceramic is just a really, really good material. And it makes sense. Ceramic is you know, it's, it's a very heat resistant material and essentially if you put electricity in, the ceramic will get hot. And, you know, with that, a certain surface temperature is achieved and that then reflects or it emits these types of infrared. And if you design a heater that way, you can actually design the heater in a way so that it emits certain material, certain wavelengths more or less depending on your design. And the reason on why ceramic heaters were used 10 to 12 years ago is that they can, they can run very hot. So you kind of have an infrared sauna, you go in there, it needs a lot of electricity to go in in order to make these heaters hot, basically. And with that, infrared is being emitted and it gets quite hot. It's a really, really good material to create a lot of intensity. But the wavelength is not ideal because it's very much geared towards the middle infrared only and it doesn't really have the near infrared component or the far infrared component. Carbon heaters itself, which tend to be a lot bigger, um, and, uh, you know, it, yeah, you sort of see these carbon panels that are kind of typically black or gray um, and are kind of put in the sidewards or backwards of an infrared. So now if you heat those, they have a much more even heat distribution because you literally pull electricity in because it's a bigger heater. You sort of have heat li literally all around the heater. The surface temperature goes up and through that you again have a different infrared wavelength that you can actually design depending on the heater. We use a mix of carbon and ceramic because both material have, you know, really good, really good features, really good attributes, and therefore we combine the two of them. But they're also full spectrum heaters, and they are typically made out of halogen bulbs. Halogen um, is great in order to really create a lot of heat and light. You know, you also sometimes see these in, in ceiling panels for lighting use, very different wavelengths. But again, you can design these and. If you know a good manufacturer, just really ask them like what materials do they use and what are the wavelengths that they use. In our sauna, we use a halogen full spectrum heater, which emits approximately a third near mid and far infrared. So we've designed the heater specifically to really make sure that it's a full spectrum heater that has near middle and far infrared and sort of an even distribution to make sure that you really get the best out of all infrared spectrums. Other manufacturers might use LEDs or red light therapy also uses LEDs. LEDs are light emitting diodes, right? So they're primarily used in order to create light. Now you could argue, well, near infrared technically is light. It's electromagnetic energy, which is true. And therefore, especially for red light therapy or the, you know, photo buying modulation, LEDs are great. Like they're really good because you can really nail it down to those uh, 800 to 860 nanometers, which is the wavelength that you actually want when it comes to red light therapy, but they're not really good at raising your core temperature. Because in a sauna, the light should be of good quality, but you need a lot of energy. You want the sauna to be hot, or you want the heater to be actually of good quality so that your core temperature rises, 
get that cardiovascular response, you get vessel dilation, and essentially your whole system is kind of geared up towards workout. And as a consequence, we sweat. Our body needs to cool and we really get that workout in. With red light therapy, very different. You know, you want to have that photobiomodulation. You want near infrared and red light, two specific wavelengths together. With that, your mitochondria are being stimulated, but it's nothing to do with the sauna. It's a fundamentally different metabolic process, equally beautiful, very healthy, but it does not give you that cardiovascular response. And nonetheless, it's both the infrared spectrum, very different materials that have actually been chosen in order to create those wavelengths, and it really comes down to what is the use case that you're after. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you give us a like and subscribe down below. Ask questions in the comment sections. We'll obviously get back to you. Um, and also make sure that you check out our YouTube channel. We have a lot of other videos on this topic, which we sincerely hope help you in understanding this topic a lot better. And we look forward to seeing you again in our YouTube channel.